name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we have my March wrap up. had an amazing reading month. I'm actually going to be talking to you guys about more than 25 books this month. Um, I read every single day this month except for one day which we will talk about as I go through the books. Um, but because of that, I'm not going to take too long at the beginning and hopefully I can be succinct enough that you guys understand my feelings on the books but not too long-winded. So the first book that I have here is going to be Shards by Pip Reyes, Kimberly Moss, Rolf Salazar, Matt Ng, Don Ellis Aguilo, and Digo Salazar. This one fulfilled our prompt to read the book in your TBR with the highest Goodreads ratings. This one only had one other review and it was a five star. I do have to say that I didn't quite feel this collection of short stories in this graphic novel quite as much as the person who read it and rated it. I ended up giving this three out of five stars, mostly because there were some really, really good stories in here, but there were also some ones that I just either did not enjoy or did not get. Um, my biggest problem with this one, um, because I did look after I read it to see on their website and everything, there's only, I think, one story from this collection that has had a continuation so far um, and it's one that I'm okay with but at the very beginning especially there were two short stories that I was absolutely intrigued by and starting to love but they ended so abruptly and so quickly that I didn't really feel like I got a good enough example of the world and then there were other stories that I did not enjoy and they were so long and so long-winded like it just sort of seemed like it was a weird combination of how they decided what stories got how many pages like one of my favorite stories was at the very beginning and it had just gotten good and it's like 13 pages until it's the to be continued that's it um, and then there was another story that I did not quite enjoy which took up 45 pages before the to be continued. So that's more than three times as many pages for a story that I just was not feeling. So I gave it a three stars. I was really conflicted because there was some stuff that I really enjoyed and then some stuff I did not. The next one I read was backwards because it's a manga, um, is Love Me, Love Me Not by Ayo Sakisaka. This one I absolutely did love. I gave it five out of five stars. This is the same author from Aoharu Ride, which I've only read two volumes of so far, but gave them both five stars, absolutely loved it, and I think I'm very much and very quickly falling in love with this manga artist and writer, and I might be picking up everything that they write. Um, so this one I do feel like was a little bit unique for a shoujo manga because of the fact that it is very focused. Ooh, it's so white on this one. Can we see this a little bit better? a little better. It's very much focused on the friendship between these two girls, which they are very opposite personalities. They believe in love coming to them in different ways, and I loved their friendship, but I also loved the fact that we are slowly at the end of this first volume getting some of those like typical shoujo manga I guess love interests, so like the will they won't they sort of things, and I'm just so so excited to see more in this series and like I said I, I think I'm very much falling in love with this manga writer and yeah it was so good if you love shoujo manga but you also want some like friendship type of stories this one was amazing then I read Cancer Ships Aquarius by Anita Sunday. This is the fifth book in the Signs of Love series, and I gave this one a three and a half stars. This is the lowest rated book in the Signs of Love series for me personally, um, and this is my favorite series by this author. It wasn't bad. It was just I had come to expect a little bit more slow burnness from her because this is a, an LGBTQ romance, 
and for whatever reason it just felt a little bit like hitting me over the head with like the sexual innuendos um, and I didn't get as much of like the the pining and slow burning that I really really wanted this one follows Reed and Sullivan Reed sort of applies to be a nanny to Sullivan's kid um, who is in high school doesn't really need a nanny um, because the real reason is that the daughter of Sullivan is basically in the market for a nanny for her dad to sort of get him out of the yacht boat thing that they live on and back out into the real world after his partner's death. Um, so we do have some very hard topics in here a little bit as well, although it had been a few years since the passing of the partner, so it's not like um, it's super, super fresh in this book. But because of that, we do get a lot of, like I said, sexual innuendos from Reed, who I, I don't know, I just, it didn't quite feel genuine to me, but there's also a lot of miscommunication in this book, which is not my favorite romance trope, and I just didn't really get that pining that I have come to expect from the Signs of Love series. I've read a couple other books from other series from her, and I do feel that she has been slowly making her way towards more smutty books, like more, more smutty scenes in books. Um, but the Signs of Love series, while they have had some scenes, especially near the end, has always to me felt more about the emotional connection between the two main characters and takes its time to get there. And I don't know if it's just this is her new writing style and I didn't quite jive with this book from it or if it's just these characters. Um, we will have to see because I'm pretty sure there's at least one more book in the Signs of Love series because it's connecting like two zodiac signs per book so there's 12 there should be six um i'll have to see on the next one i still love the series this one was just not my favorite from it and cancer ships aquarius does actually have a prompt as well and that is to read the last book in a series i twisted this a little bit to read the last book that had been released in a series the next few books I'm going to talk about are actually all vlogged during my Backlist Readathon vlog, so I'm going to leave that linked down below for you guys. So because of that, and I give extensive reasons for my ratings in that video, I'm not going to dwell on these books as much. The first book I read for that is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I did give this book a four stars. I liked the journey that we took on here because it was a lot of lore that we had to slowly learn as we read through the book. Um, my biggest issue with this book is that I did not really feel a connection to the characters. Like, I could have taken or left any of them. And um, I am excited for the next book in the series that should be coming out in the next few months, mostly because I don't know where this story is going to take us after the ending of it. And this one also does a prompt to read a book set in winter. This is sort of a Russian inspired tale. However, they do mention that the main land that they're in at the beginning is in a long winter. So definitely fits. Then we have Arthur Blackfrost by Justin Vincent Gray. I gave this one two stars. Um, this is a 72 page graphic novel that I had um, funded on Kickstarter a couple years ago. And I absolutely love the art style by Laura. I, no, I can't do that. Um, and I absolutely did love the art style. However, this is a story that is supposed to be about the Black Frost family curse and Arthur Black Frost sort of overcoming it. I found this story to have too much telling and not showing. Almost every single dialogue bubble, it's not even dialogue, but every single bubble in here, um, almost every single one was a narrator giving us backstory and we didn't get to experience everything as it should have been, especially for a graphic novel. Um, and so I just really felt disconnected from this story. Then I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I loved this one so much and gave it five out of five stars. This is a really nice new take on Beauty and the Beast. I loved the fact that Harper, our main character, came from a like modern day, I think it's DC area. But then when she goes into like the Beauty and the Beast type world with Ren and Grey. It is very much more of like a medieval style. There's castles, there's a village, and like, I don't know, it just was really, really great. I also love the dual perspectives between Harper and Ren, 
And the fact that we didn't have like insta love and all this other kind of stuff. I loved the character growth. And this is another one that I'm very, very excited to see about the sequel, which I know is already out and I just need to get my hands on. Then we have Catalyst by Alan Dean Foster. This is a book that I gave three stars. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't amazing. It is a sci-fi that I don't even know how to necessarily bill it. The summary on the back is basically the whole book, which um, I don't like it, especially I feel like some older books have been doing this to me lately, if I read the summary again, where some of the stuff that's in the summary doesn't take place until over halfway through, which is what happened here. Apparently there's inter, intra, what is it? Extra dimensional Incas bent on conquest of the entire world, but we didn't even get there until more than halfway through. The dialogue was a little bit weird and I was just expecting it to be funnier based on other people's reviews. Um, and so I did end up finishing it. Wish there was more cats in it because they are in the title. Didn't really get a whole lot of time in this book. So middle of the road, three stars. Then we also have volume one, two, and three of Fence. Volume one was a reread for me. And then we did read volume two and three. I gave all three of these five stars. Absolutely love them. I first discovered these when they were coming out in issues um, because I follow Joanna the Mad the Illustrator on Instagram and like all of her places and I just love the art style. This one is about boys at a school that has fencing and they're trying to make the fencing team. There are LGBTQ characters and I just really, really love it so, so much. Then during the readathon, I did end up DNFing 1Q84 uh, 20 something pages in. So this one doesn't even have a rating for me on Goodreads because I just only 20 pages into like an 1,000, 1,200 page book, like that's barely anything. But um, it had some issues in it that I just could not get over. It was boring, but also our male main character focuses a lot on females and he has a reoccurring memory of his mom having sex and it's just, um, I, I couldn't continue on with this. So I had to pick a different book for the readathon and we read The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I gave this five out of five stars. Really, really enjoyed this one as well. It is a high fantasy that also incorporates um, like 20th century Chinese history into it. And I really, really enjoyed this. Like the title says though, it is the Poppy War. And there are three parts to the book in the third part almost right away. We have a lot of triggers, especially with things that could be considered like war atrocities, rape, mutilation, killing. And I don't personally think I have any triggers, but some of the stuff that happened in that third part involved infants and I have an eight month old and I just, that part hit me a lot. I, again, I don't think I have any triggers or anything, but just be aware the first two parts were really good and actually not too crazy. That third part though hits you so hard, but I loved it and I need to read the second book. Okay, and then that was the end of the stuff that I did for the backlist readathon. So the next thing that I ended up reading was some manga. Um, I did reread the first three volumes of QQ Sweeper by Kyosuke Motomi. So we have volume one, two, and three. These were ones that I have read previously and still gave them five out of five stars. I really enjoyed these. This series follows Fumi who meets a boy named Kyutaro and finds out that him and his family are sweepers, which basically means they get to go into this other world sort of place where they can go into people's subconscious and sweep out and clean up like the negative thoughts and feelings and stuff that they have in order to make their mental health better. Um, these three are really cute and I love them. The third book is the last one in this series because then they did sort of a spin-off continuation of the series. And then we are into the eight books of Queen's Quality I read, which is the spin-off series. The first book of Queen's Quality was to read book one in a spin-off series. I know this is technically a continuation series. I counted it as a spin-off series because of the fact that 
Otherwise, it wasn't going to happen because I am not caught up on a lot of series or want to reread a lot before I read the first in a spinoff. Um, so we have eight books here. I gave the first five five stars and the last three four stars. This again follows Fumi especially um, as she is living as a sweeper, like living with their family, um, and we discover that she has the potential to become a queen, which in this world means that she can sort of help control people, control the like the bugs that they're cleaning out of people's minds, and that could either be good or bad. I really did enjoy these, but the first five were like a story arc that sort of completed, and then six through who knows what um, is starting the second story arc. And for whatever reason, the six, seven, and eight books just felt a little bit slow. The beginning of like all three volumes was a little bit confusing, and I didn't know where it was going, and by the end of the book, I was on board again. Every single time. But I feel like the first five we're doing a really, really good job of sort of explaining the queen's quality and like everything that's going on. But the last three, I wasn't as like gung ho with, but they were still really, really good. And now everything else that I have to talk to you about are net galley books. I had quite a few books um, that are going to be actually coming out in April, and I wanted to make sure that I was telling you guys about them. So I made sure to read them at the end of March. The first one is Only When It's Us by Chloe Lise. This is a book that I gave three stars. I had very mixed feelings about this book. We follow two main characters, Willa and Ryder, and I absolutely loved Ryder's point of view in this book. Um, we do find out pretty early on that he is hard of hearing, not fully deaf, but quite close, and I loved the representation that he had, and he was just a really refreshing breath of air in this book. He was super sweet, but also a little bit down on himself because of the hard of hearingness, and I just loved the way he connected with our main female character of Willa. However, I did not enjoy Willa's point of view at all, and out of 20-something chapters, she had two-thirds of them, so I had to deal with her a whole lot more than I really, really wanted to. I didn't enjoy the way she was written, which is interesting because I really did enjoy the writing for writer's chapters, um, but Willa repeated herself constantly. She was always angry. There were actually nine separate mentions in different ways of her being angry in the first chapter alone. She, that was like her only <laughs> emotion for a lot of it. Um, she also apparently though, did not know how to talk to people about hard topics, and she constantly had to mention that. And she also, apparently, talked to herself out loud so often. Um, I actually have a few different quotes about it, but she would be thinking to herself about somebody, and then they would reply to her, and she almost always said, word for word, oh, was I talking out loud? And she said it so often, like, I don't know how this got past an editor for that stuff. It was just too much hitting you over the head with like her four main personality points. Um, I kept reading this book because of Ryder. If he wasn't in there or wasn't written the way he was, I would have DNF'd this book. I'm still giving it a three stars even though I sometimes want to give it a lower score, only because I really, really enjoyed Ryder's part. This is also a new adult romance, but it's not just a romance. They do deal with some other hard issues if you weren't aware by the time that you realized that a writer is hard of hearing. Um, so like, there was a lot of stuff I wanted to like more than I did, but Willa took it down for me. And then I read Blue Flag by Kaito, and I gave this five stars. I, I wasn't really expecting to give it five stars through about two thirds of the volume, but I was so intrigued by the premise and then it took a turn at the end that I was not expecting, and I absolutely loved it, and I need more in this series. So this is a series that is, I don't necessarily want to specify it's a shoujo, because it is having a main character that's a guy, and I don't see that as often, but it's billed as having a love quadrangle. So not a love triangle, a love quadrangle. And it's about Taichi, our main character, trying to help Futaba, 
confess her feelings for his friend Toma. And so it's him trying to sort of set them up, but then we learn near the end that Toma already has feelings for somebody else, and there's somebody else who potentially likes Futaba as well. There are LGBTQ characters, and I'm just super intrigued about where this is gonna go, especially with the quadrangle aspect. I really, really enjoyed it. Then I read Eat and Love Yourself by Sweeney Boo, and I gave this one a three stars. This is a graphic novel about a young adult. I, I believe she's in college, potentially. I, I don't know if they specified. I think she's like in college or like young 20s, um, who has an eating disorder and doesn't feel like she is pretty because of her weight. Um, based on the way she's drawn, I don't think she is necessarily like too overweight, but she definitely has some like body dysmorphia and um, there are definitely trigger warnings for bulimia and anorexia. And I liked the art style. I liked where they were trying to go with the message. Um, this is all about her finding a chocolate bar that when you eat it, you get to sort of relive your memories or see your memories. And it's trying to like examine sort of her early life and why she feels the way she does about her body. Um, I feel like it could have explained some stuff a little bit better or maybe just because I technically am overweight and am not the skinniest person and I never have been, but I don't feel the same way that she does. So maybe I just didn't exactly get it, but um, I felt it was middle of the road. Some people probably love this way more than I did. Then I read Once and Future by Kieran Gillen and Dan Mora Illustrated. I have loved things by Kieran Gillen before and Dan Mora was the original illustrator on the newer Buffy comics that had been coming out. And so this series and volume has been on my radar for a while and let me tell you, it did not disappoint. I did not fully remember what it was when I went into it. I still gave it like five stars. Um, but it is about Duncan and his grandmother Bridget who are trying to stop people from bringing back King Arthur because in this world, King Arthur is like a bad guy. You do not want him around. Um, it is very, very dark. I love the fact that Duncan is very naive about this. So he was almost like the reader in a sense where I know some like King Arthur myths and stuff, but because of the fact that King Arthur is like more of a bad guy in this one, there's different twists to the myth that I haven't heard before. And so I liked the fact that he was sort of figuring it out and letting us figure it out with him. But also Bridget is a spitfire. Like the fact that she's like a badass grandma, an old lady on there. I really, really enjoyed it. I need more in this series. Again, I'm definitely gonna be buying this for myself. It was great. It was dark, it was gritty and I loved it. And then the book that made me, um, not hit all days of reading was You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle. I DNF'd this book. So I started reading this book actually pretty soon after I finished Only When It's Us. And I disliked this one even more. So this is billed as sort of a former lovers to enemies, back to lovers. They're engaged to be married, but they don't really like each other. And they, neither one of them wants to break off the engagement themselves. I think there's some sort of like, you either have to pay off the deposits or something on the, the wedding. Um, so they're trying to, I guess, annoy each other until they break up with each other, but then they're supposed to grow closer, closer together. Um, the main character of Naomi, who is our only point of view in this book, is horrible. She is the worst person and I could not stand reading from her. I don't know why she doesn't like Nicholas, her fiance anymore. I don't know why or if he doesn't like her anymore. We didn't really get anything from him in the first four chapters I read, I believe it was. Um, but we do discover that she has basically lied to him about everything. And if he questions her about it at all, she like gets so offended. There were actually a couple times in there where she mentions that he said to her sometime when they were dating that women should know how to change a tire. And she got offended that he thought women don't know how to change a tire. So she claims she does know how to change a tire, um, but she doesn't. 
And the reason she lied to him was for feminism. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Let me pull up another quote, because I just, I need to. So this is pretty soon after that. She's talking now about, I guess, Nicholas's dad, um, who has quoting, who has deplorably antiquated beliefs commented that women don't know how to change their oil. In return, I said, excuse you, I change my oil all the time. I said it for feminism. She lied again. Like, she's just constantly lying. She's saying she's saying it for feminism, which doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. If you don't know what to, how to do it, you don't know how to do it. Like, that's perfectly fine. And I just can't with her. She also, in within one chapter, claims the guy she's riding home with because, you know, her tire hasn't been changed because it's flat and she doesn't know how to do it, um, kills people and puts them in his trunk. And then she's like, oh, but he doesn't. He's actually a sweet guy. But then she keeps talking about how he would, like, cut them into pieces and, like, that's probably why he has such a bad air freshener in his car. And, like, I don't know what she's thinking. And so I read four chapters one night. And then the very next night, I could not bring myself to read it so I didn't read anything. And then the next night I couldn't bring myself to read it, so I read one of the graphic novels I had talked about. Um, and I just got to the point where I cannot stand this person. I read some reviews about the book and apparently she doesn't even start to get any nicer to her fiance or anything until over halfway through the book and I don't have time for that. So I gave it one star, I DNF'd. And then the last book that I read for this month was Ghosted in LA by Sina Grace and Saban Keenan, who is the illustrator. That is again the reason I found this graphic novel. I've been following this illustrator on Instagram and stuff before, and I was very interested in this book. This book is, I think, very unique. It is a coming of age story about Daphne, who had gone to a college in LA because she followed her boyfriend out there and he almost immediately breaks up with her and as she's sort of wallowing in self-pity she comes across a house a manor it, it's, a, it's a quite big house that is um resided in by ghosts and she can see them and they sort of help her or try to help her get her life back on track um this is only the first four issues comprised in this volume so i obviously need more i love the art style i loved the way the characters and the story was going and like I said it's only the first four issues so I definitely need more but it was a really good start to the series and I'm very excited for it so hopefully this isn't too long of a video um, but that is everything I read in March I hope you guys enjoyed if you did please give it a thumbs up to let me know subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos I do have videos up Mondays and Thursdays so I will see you then bye